Uh, welcome to Obsession Engineering. We're at Donington Park for round 10 of VSB. Uh, it is getting towards the end of the season and the weather certainly feels like it because it rained a lot overnight and it is cold this morning. Uh, and so the circuit isn't drying particularly well. Uh, and for a change, we're not out at one o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, we're out at quarter to 11 and the track's damp. So it's an ideal time uh, for uh, stand-in rider Tom Ward to be getting his next taste of Superbike. Team boss Matt, yeah. we, we've got Tom back uh, because Franco's injuries uh, aren't really good enough to ride a super bike yet. That's about the size of it, isn't it? Basically, that is the only reason he's not riding is these wrists are not up to it yet. We had to make a tough decision. It wasn't it wasn't nice. I know he wants to ride. He's disappointed. He's a racer at the end of the day. Um, but we had to make a decision for the team. We had to be out there, um, and that somewhat snowballed <laughs> from a replacement rider for Franco to four bikes in the garage and a lot of people. Right. And as Matt mentioned there, uh, four bikes, because uh, Tom had already agreed to do uh, stock this weekend as well. So uh, he has got our Rapid Honda Superbike uh, with his fuel tank and seat unit and bits like we ran at Cadwell Park. Uh, but he's also riding his super stocker, uh, which was just getting pushed out of the garage. Uh, but because that's in with the Sam Cox racing team, we also have Sam Cox and Tom Oliver uh, riding this weekend on the Armada Marine Cables Hondas. Uh, and so it is a very busy garage. Luckily, it's all Hondas and luckily we all know each other pretty well. So we're, we're getting along, um, but uh, at the moment we're just bouncing elbows a little bit. Yeah, my favourite, cold, wet Donington Park. Um, a little bit different to the Baldor, your last ride. Yes, yeah. Yeah, riding around at 80%, well, maybe not 80%, not at the end. Um, but yeah, riding around a bit off the pace in 25 degrees, slightly different, but <laughs> doing 785 laps or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice to have 785 laps around here. I think I'd definitely know where I'm going by then, wouldn't I? I would have no excuses. <laughs> Uh, cool, so the atmosphere is still pretty relaxed. We know there's no pressure in FP1. We can just go out, get a few laps in, and we know the lap times will be faster this afternoon when it dries out anyway. Yeah, definitely. Try not to make an idiot of myself like last time and crash in FP1 in the wet. Touch wood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, we better get ready and get out there, mate. Here comes our boy. Nice and steady first lap. <laughs> Not the best session, uh, but <laughs> iffy conditions, but got a few laps in, at least got some mileage on the bike. Yes, yeah, just wanted to ride round really, just familiarise yourself with it and the brakes and just, there was a lot of people going a lot faster, but I just thought I don't want to, don't know, I've got nothing to gain really, just as long as I get used to the bike, get used to the power of it and all that. Alright, since FP1, uh, well, Tom's obviously been out on the stocker as well. Uh, conditions weren't still perfect in that, but it was getting drier and drier, so we did a dry tyre run on that. Uh, the session now should be basically dry everywhere, so we've got slicks, full dry mapping and everything in the superbike. It's a couple of minutes before Tom's going out. Uh, what we need is laps on the bike to get him used to it and get him really used to like the Pirellis when you're going fast on them. Uh, and we know that a few laps into the tyre, when the tyre starts to move and stuff, that's when you really get a feel for the bike. So the plan is to go and basically do a replica sprint race. So head out uh, and do a 12 lap run uh, and then we can come in, see how we're feeling. We can always make some adjustments and have another little spin out after that. So while we eat biscuits, uh, we're doing debriefs. So track map is the important bit for our debrief. Uh, and we're going to do uh, Tom, Tom Ward first, because we have more than one Tom. Uh, and we're going to debrief Superbike first, and then we'll move on to the horde of stockers, and we'll make some decisions. As soon as I touch the gas, it's actually like, it's, it's nice initially, like the first touch. And when the tire was gone off, I could feel exactly where I was, and I could actually slide. Um, I was absolutely terrible. Like I just wasn't pushing the front or like trusting the grip. So that's what I mean. What that's why I just found in that session on the stocker. Like, I was like, there is so much more grip. Yeah. So it was okay initial, but then then it like sits. Run, it like yeah. sits. You can just feel it getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And then it started getting like three quarters of the way out. The front will just lift, and I'll be like yeah. trying to hang off the bike to keep it going that way, but it's just going wide. Yeah. 
after quite a lengthy debrief, because there was four bikes of information to go through, uh, we have a bit of a plan, or at least we've got the information for all four bikes to make some decisions, uh, and it is nearly dinner time. Uh, so Claire's done us something lovely, uh, and the boys will actually stop in a minute and do, well, some eating. But... It's not been a bad day. We have four bikes in one piece, and being as it's cold and it's uh, Donington Park, not everybody has, because Craner has claimed a few today. Uh, but Chris is keeping warm with the clutch, aren't you, Chris? It is lovely and warm, that. Quite a, quite a little please in the hands, yeah. It's nice, that. Pleasing. Is it a little please bit warmer hands. than you expected? <laughs> it was, yeah, but I feel like I've sort of committed to this now, so I'll get it done. <laughs> uh, Rob is doing brake lines. Uh, we've had the front dry brake connector uh, on the brake line, which is there so we can change the handlebar in a hurry. Yeah. Uh, just weeping a tiny bit, haven't we, Rob? So yeah. just doing that. Yeah, we just found a little bit of a, uh, looks like a, a bit of a part failure. So we've uh, we've got a spare one. So we've put that on and we'll just keep an eye on it before we send him out just to make sure because the front brake is quite useful on one of, well, on anything really, but yeah, especially on one of these. Only slows you down that, doesn't well, it? Well, Steve McQueen didn't need him, did he? No, and he was a real man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, right, we go for dinner, lads. Yes. yes. Yay! I'm going to put it out there. I think Pete's already gone. And Ilium's here. I am. Hey, up, Billy. Right. Uh, you're back to do another super stock round? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Decent day? Not really. Good this morning in the damp conditions, but this afternoon, I think I lost my head in the colour conditions, but tomorrow's a new day, so we'll see. We'll have a go in the morning. Um, well, the beer, for a change, is not because I need it, it's because I want it. <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> <laughs> Big difference. Um, this morning was a bit hectic. Four bikes in a garage is a lot to do, as we've figured out quite quickly. But in fairness to these boys, they've got up to speed. The second session was miles better. Everyone was more organised. We had a rhythm. We had a routine. Everyone knew what we were doing. Miles better. We just got on with our job as normal. Uh, I think everyone just wants to get on with tomorrow now. A bit of qualifying. It's the free practice. Is free practice. It's boring, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you want to you want to see where the, the business starts and that's qualifying so I think tomorrow will be even more exciting I, I'm feeling confident that we could get back into the top 15 again uh, and have a bit of a repeat of Cadwell I think um, I think it was probably a bit of a surprise for Tom that it took him a little bit longer um, to kind of get back up to speed with it but um, you know he's been sort of doing different bikes different tyres everything else so um but I'm confident. I think with a good night's rest um, and everything we built on today, I know you've made some changes on the bike. Yeah, I'm quietly confident. Top, top 15. <laughs> It is very close to half past ten on Saturday morning, which means the superbike is just about to go out. Uh, we have made a few little tweaks from yesterday, uh, so let's have a look. Uh, right, stiffer rear spring, because on the corner exit, Tom feels like it's, it's digging in a little bit, and as it squats, as it like loads into the shock, it runs it like a little bit wide, so we've gone stiffer. Uh, during the sessions yesterday, we altered the fork height, and we've gone back to the setting we preferred, which is actually what we started on. Uh, but we have made a little bit of a tweak to the front preload so that when he rolls the throttle it just pitches a little bit more and, and makes it a little bit easier to transfer the weight uh, but the biggest thing is we've uh, put a different clutch in it the other one when he shut the throttle at the end of the brakes and first went for his first gear change uh, the clutch opened a bit too much uh, and that meant it didn't stop the bike very well initially uh, and so we've got a different engine brake map with a bit more engine brake uh, we've altered the clutch a little bit, uh, but the rider's got his own one because we're very much about to go out. Uh, 
Right, that was a very busy turnaround. We had 10 minutes, minus the time it takes you to get back to the garage, so realistically, eight minutes. Uh, we made a change in the engine brake, so it's got more engine brake at the top of the rev range, because uh, putting the clutch in didn't completely fix uh, the problem, so we've given it more engine brake, uh, a tiny little uh, fork change as well, uh, new front wheel, new front tyre, he's going to do three laps and then we'll put a new rear tyre in, because this is qualifying and this matters, but we're into the 129s, mid 129s in FB3, so a big step forward for yesterday. Right, so Tom is back after qualifying, uh, so we were 7th in Q1, which puts us 19th overall, but we were only 0.2 of a second uh, of getting into the top three and going through into Q2. The times were really, really close. Uh, did a 129.3, uh, so really strong lap time on the last lap as well, and he fully admits there's a couple of little mistakes in there. Uh, we still need to get it to stop better on the initial, when he first shuts the throttle and goes to the brake, we need a bit more engine brake to help pull the bike down. Um, so we've got a bit of work to do with him, well, we've got a bit of work to do, so that works for him a bit better. And on the side of the tyre, out of turn one, and Stark is in places where you're driving on the side of the tyre, at the moment it's actually gripping a bit too much and pushing the front wide. Uh, so we need to get it to actually keep turning a little bit more on power. Um, so a couple of details that we need to sort, but the fact that he's doing those sort of lap times already and we know he's going to get quicker during a race as well. So uh, I'm confident we'll be towards a point still in the races. What time of day is it? There's a clock up there. It's about half past two, which means in an hour and a quarter we are rolling out for race one for Superbike. Uh, and luckily the stockers are after us. So we can actually concentrate on our job for a little bit. I will be honest, uh, I had a little brain melt because uh, debriefing three riders on four bikes uh, meant that I felt like I wasn't getting all the detail that I should have got for each one because you can't give everybody all the attention because there's too much going on. Um, yeah, so I had a little brain melt that I wasn't doing my job properly. Um, but then we sort of settled down, we wrote the priority list out <laughs> uh, and worked it bit by bit. So. Uh, then we wanted more engine brake on the superbike, but I realised then when we looked at the data that Tom, uh, Tom or one of us, like, as we've been getting the bike out, has pressed the button to put it in B mode, which was a completely different engine brake map. So the mode, the engine brake that I'd worked out for FP that we never used, we're now going to try in the race. Uh, we've also changed preload setting in the shock because we went stiff on the spring, and I think we ended up with too much preload on it. Um, and so it w wasn't terrible. And it's actually taught, taught us a little bit how, how far we can go and the bike sort of still works. Um, but I think it was a bit too hard and it was making the bike want to wheelie too much on corner exits um, and then run it wide. So we've done a little tweak to that um, and we're changing the gearing a little bit because we can have a little bit more punch in a couple of places. Uh, but uh, in the back of the garage, uh, Rodri from Honda, they're... Um, engine braking genius uh, has come to visit uh, and so I'm going to disappear for a minute and uh, go and talk to him and then my brain will melt because he's very clever and all the information will not fit in my noggin. Right, as most of the riders cycle through onto the grid uh, our rider is going for two outlaps so we've uh, fueled him up so he's got plenty of go-go juice. Uh, this just gives him a chance to get a bit more of the feel back for the superbike uh, and we've made some quite big changes to engine brake and stuff so it gives him just a bit of a chance to uh, basically get a feel for it uh, and then we'll get him lined up on the grid slot a back wheel in it make sure riders happy yeah should be right and here is Wardy on our little motorbike so he's in there he'll, he'll find neutral in a minute because there's a little lever to pull to get it into neutral and there we go right I'll see how he's getting on how does it feel yeah feels all right yeah, yeah. <coughs> still struggling a bit to, well to slow down into the foggy S's but yeah any better at all <coughs> yeah definitely felt better like as soon as I went out closed throttle it was like slowing down more right definitely. cool so it's a step it's just yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and oh, it's heavy fuel load at the moment yeah definitely. that's as heavy as we've ever run it <laughs> is it yeah Connect. it's where you get the extra lap and this place is heavy on fuel oh, with okay. the stop start stuff so yeah cool that's cool, cool. cool. Rear feel all right? Yeah, I feel all right. Yeah, I feel good. Cool. It actually felt better. Good. It felt like I had a bit more edge grip. I wasn't like pushing, pushing, but yeah. it felt not I could feel where I was a bit more with it. Cool. That'll do then, boy. Nice. Nice! You'll nice. have more edge grip now with your new boot in it. Yeah, no. Sweet! <laughs> uh, right, so 
Ryder is happy. Rob's just slotting a uh, fresh back tyre in it and talking that up. I'll pump his thumb brake for him. Done. Jez is just checking on the laptop. Uh, basically, we check all the sensors are reading correctly, uh, that everything's happy and doing its thing. Um, and just ticking as many boxes as we can. That's all good. We're in the right engine brake mode, which is important. And uh, Claire's just making the place look good. How do you reckon our boy's going to go? I think he's going to go forward, David. Yes. I do. And I think he'll he'll look at the points there. I think he's, he, he found a bit in that stop um, qualify, well, practice qualifying. So, yeah, I think he'll go forward. Just walking back to our garage after the start, uh, um, there was a lot of juddering and lurching and sort of wheeling off the start. So uh, that wasn't what we wanted. So uh, we're currently down in 22nd place. So there is a bit of work to do, uh, but to be fair, we were down that sort of area at Cadwell and uh, he got right back in the mix. So, uh, yeah, there's a bit of work to do, but he can do it. Right, race one for the weekend finished and we were 21st. Yeah, 20th or 21st. Shocking start. Uh, and then just looked like he oh, either got beat up or something and ended up near enough last on lap one and then uh, and then we never made a recovery really. Uh, he managed to get a couple of people, uh, Wesley on the kind of car bike and uh, got a hedging but hedging pulled in, uh, same lap, I think they might have had a tyre problem. Um, so yeah, not good and the lap time was three quarters of a second off what we did in quality which is not what we expect because um, we know he's uh, capable of more so something with the bike I'm assuming is not right because uh, we know the rider is more capable than that so yeah uh, tough day out man right, it's finally gone quiet outside because the racing house done for the day we have all the bikes back from Park Ferme uh, me and Jez uh, have been looking at data from the superbike we had a quick chat with Tom after the uh, race before he jumped on the stocker so we've got quite a lot of notes um, and the main issue is still we can't really get the bike to stop how we want it uh, changing the gearing didn't help because we were hitting the limiter in a few places uh, and it made it basically more difficult and wheeled more out of a couple of corners uh, and the bike spinning a lot in a couple of places like especially through uh, Starkers and Schwantz on the left hand side of the tyre uh, and it's wearing the tyre quite hard as well uh, and so it's not really gripping where we need it to grip it's not really stopping where we need to stop, so we can't stop, we can't go, uh, and it's not really tracking the line he wants when he's on throttle either. So, uh, so basically, it doesn't stop, it doesn't hold a line, and it doesn't grip very well, uh, which is why we're struggling a little bit on lap time. So we're going to have a, a bit more of a debrief, a bit more looking at data to see what the rider feels compared to what the data says, uh, but we've already got a few ideas from that. Um, Yes, and then we'll also have a look at the data from his stocker because he's currently, um, a, well, in race pace, he was actually quicker on the stocker over a single lap than he was on the superbike, uh, but in quality, he was quicker on the superbike. So the superbike has the potential to go faster, but currently isn't doing. Uh, and uh, while Rob was checking things, he found something that delighted him no end, didn't he, Rob? Yes, we found uh, the output shaft seal has sprung a leak. Uh, so, true to form. Ta-da! <laughs> we did actually have one at one weekend. No, two where we didn't change. Oh, no, no, only one where we didn't Just change. Just the one at Cadwell, wasn't yes. it, where we didn't yeah. do an engine did change. I mean, we did one last at Alton for fun, didn't we? Yes, we put um, this one in well, because... Well, making, making most of the time that we had, yeah. should we say. Uh, yeah. But unfortunately, no, this one needs doing, so we're so on it. That is actually the... Uh, re the that's actually the Cadwell engine back in. Yes. Um, and the uh, the refreshed engine that we put in at Alton, uh, fresh crank and stuff, out because the output shaft seal leaks. Uh, so luckily you are quite well versed at this, so it's not taking too long, is no, it? No, we've only been on it probably half an hour and we've got the other one out and we've got this one in. We just need to start building it back up now. And uh, we should be, should be about finished for tea time, all being well, and then we'll uh, wait for you to, you know, decide that you want everything changing again at 10 o'clock tonight. Excellent, I'm pleased you understand. <laughs> right. It's dark outside. It's been dark for a while, if I'm honest. Uh, there's been a lot of thinking and a lot of head scratching and a lot of um, decision making tonight, but um, Ryder is still here. We, we've worked through this, haven't we, Tom? Yeah, we worked through this really well, and now we don't know what we're doing. Right, the rider's gone mental, uh, crew chief's gone mental, 
uh, mechanics in, in a moment are going to go mental at the crew chief and the rider. Uh, so, yeah, team effort today. Uh, but, yeah, the race pace wasn't what we wanted. 29.9 faster in the race. But we were 0.6 quicker in quality, and the changes to the bike weren't massive. Uh, and so we've gone back near what we had in qualifying, but with some tweaks that should work as well. Um, we'll detail them in the morning. But we're going to go faster, aren't we, Tom? We are going to go faster. We're going to go. We're going to go into 28. We're going to score points. It was embarrassing, that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to say that, but if he's going to say it, it's fine. Uh, right. And on that note, uh, it's time to go. See you tomorrow. Sunday morning, after a relatively late Saturday night, making decisions and making changes. Uh, our warm-up starts in about seven minutes, so uh, sport bike cover just riding around, but they're nearly finished. Uh, right, changes. We're going to go and talk through what we've done. Uh, rear preload and rear rider. Basically, we've gone up, so the back of the bike sits higher, uh, and that should make it turn better the second half of the corner because uh, instead of the bike like sitting down and turning into a chopper, that's going to support it, and the anti-squat then will help it keep turning. Um, so that's stiffer that's the stiffest we've ever run spring and preload wise uh, we're going to try it uh, right fork springs the thing that will make the biggest difference to feel we've gone quite a bit softer on the fork spring so that when tom hits the brakes it actually goes through the fork as opposed to sort of going halfway through the fork and then stopping and pivoting the back wheel up uh, and so softer fork springs so we can brake later because what we need to do is get the bike stopped more with the front brake but seeing that uh, we've got engine brake now which will basically shut the throttles and the thing will pretty much just stop uh, as much as the engine is capable of doing when it's in a straight line. We were using a lean angle sensitive uh, engine brake that increased the, the engine brake as it turned into the corner and the idea of that is it helps it drag the bike into the, into the apex but Tom uses the rear brake for that so we've gone back to a system that doesn't alter with lean angle uh, so that he's in control of getting it to the apex in effect so he can if he wants to he can let go of the brakes and just like roll it into the apex uh, and so it should feel quite a lot different this bike and so even though it springs and preloads and a bit of engine brake it should feel quite a lot different um, and we've been playing with gear levers and stuff so tom's just making sure everything fits and is comfy warm-up report terrible literally terrible without bringing the bike back in a basket it couldn't have been much worse we were last but one uh went very slowly um and basically the bike doesn't stop because as soon as he touches the brake uh it just lifts it like the back wheel's got no contact and then it just slides into the corner and with no control and then when he touches the throttle it's got no grip and uh yeah it's a, it's a disaster basically uh, the only good news is uh, the softer fork springs give him more feel lower in the stroke and through some of the direction changes a little bit nicer so that was a bonus and we've actually managed to get the bike to back in I mean partly because there was no grip uh, but partly because the massive engine brake figures are actually doing a thing so what we need is more grip on the rear and so to do that we've uh, gone back to a softer spring and come quite a lot off of the preload and gone lower rear ride height so basically instead of the bike pitching forward and just sitting at the top of the shock it's going to sit onto the shock a bit more and keep some load on the rear tyre and we've changed the head inserts at the moment we were plus six millimetres back quarter of a degree and we've gone plus six zero uh, and so the fork's just a little bit flatter so when he brakes he actually pushes it into the fork as opposed to it pivoting around the headstock and we're talking at the wheel that makes 1.2 millimetres of difference on trail uh, but it's all about the feel and all about it getting to push into the fork, not pivot round. So, change the head inserts, uh, change the offset in the yokes to get that millimetre back so the fork works better to push through, but the actual trail figure at the wheel is still going to work in the range we know it works in. So, yes, head inserts, fork offset, uh, fork height, we run it a whole bike lower. Uh, link length is shorter, which lowers the rear of the bike, shock is a mil lower. Uh, different rear spring, different preload setting. Big changes for the race. And each one of them is like a millimetre or two, but combined, it's going to be quite a lot different. Um, so don't get wrong, it's a roll of the dice, but currently we're nowhere, so it doesn't matter. Um, if, you're, if you're dicing for last, you may as well roll the dice. So we're having a go. 
that there are some very uh, tense faces in the garage because uh, our little side project, Harley McCabe, uh, is currently leading uh, the British Talent Cup race on the last lap. Uh, and so we have uh, a big fingers crossed because this could be his first ever victory. He is coming round the last corner. He's coming across the line. We can't see him across the line, but that is it. Uh, oh, right. Uh, <laughs> that is Harley's first ever win the British Talent Cup. This is amazing. Good. Oh, yes. That was by a mile as well. That's what he's been capable of. That's why we backed him. Oh, so, so happy. So happy. Excellent. Right, yes. podium. Let's go. Yes, let's go. <laughs> First ever win. Ali! <laughs> How does that feel? Uh, I mean, of course, you know, <laughs> obviously it feels good. I'm just happy to be back. I wanted a podium, never mind top step, but I know if I got my head down, then I could do it. So that's what I did. Come on then, show us your trophy. Oh, it's, uh, it's just like, it says everything that, yeah. Winner. Um, yeah. Yeah, well done, boys. Well done. Cheers. I've got to get back to work. Sometimes motorbike racing gets quite stressful, and so you need a way to deal with that stress. And luckily, we have some lovely people who pop us every now and again and help with stress relief. I like chocolate. Ah. Here comes our boy, uh, and he was going big on the brakes, even on the uh, way into the grid. So that's um, confident, I'm going to say. All right, tell me the truth. <laughs> I feel like I've got a bit of trail in there, and it will turn on the rear. So, well, whatever yeah. we've got to go with it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> confident. I'm confident it's going to work. Yeah. It's going to feel a bit different. But we can have a go. Hopefully, we've got, what is it, 12 laps? 12, yeah. Yeah, so I'm hoping, sort of, after the first sort of... 11. Uh, yeah, <laughs> after the first couple of laps, we'll have an idea of how it works and then how to ride it, so... Yeah, we'll be recoy. Definitely. Nice. I think it probably a podium here. <laughs> I <laughs> no. love your confidence, <laughs> Well, we'll see, we'll see, but... It's not through lack of trying, is it? No. Uh, you're looking as relaxed as ever, Rob. <laughs> yes, this, this bloody music doesn't help, does it? <laughs> yeah, it's been a bit stressful this yesterday and today, to be fair. It's been hard work this weekend. It's normally hard work, but this week, it's, you know, especially hard work. Uh, fingers crossed we've got it sorted now, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. Here they are. <laughs> it seemed a little bit better. 29.5, uh, so a little bit quicker, admittedly. Everybody's a little bit quicker because it's a sprint race, so you've got less fuel on board, you can go for hard. Um, yeah, and a uh, couple of laps are going heavy from the line of that one, so uh, there is a technical issue. We don't know what it is. Uh, but we don't have any engine for that, so hopefully it's not that. Don't go wrong. It wasn't going brilliant, but at least it was, looked a bit better. Uh, but yeah. Wait and see when we get the bike back. Look, look, all the super stock bikes have gone out to play. So Rob's enjoying having space to breathe and swim and enjoy himself. And relax. And he can relax for about three minutes until I decide what spectacular setup change to make. Uh, but that involves us looking at this. So, uh, actually, what happened in race two, this morning's race, uh, is we ran out of fuel. Uh, uh, embarrassing. Um, and it shouldn't happen. Uh, but what happened was, in the melee with so many people being around, um, I told Steve how much fuel I wanted in the bike. Uh, he misheard me, and because I was then running around chasing everybody else, uh, he didn't have a chance to catch me to ask me again, uh, and so it was a communication error because we're too busy, basically. Uh, and it is a mistake, and it shouldn't happen, but it did. So it changed the system. Now I write how much fuel I want on a board. Uh, but that's done. Uh, we're not going to run out of fuel in the next one. Feedback from race one. Feedback. Uh, race two, even. This morning's race. This is the best the bike has been. Which is good news. Uh, it is better on the brakes, but it's not perfect yet. In effect, when the bike's upright and braking, uh, because you brake hard, upright, tops the shock out. See these points where the trace has gone flat? That's the shock topped out. So basically there's not any contact, or very little contact with the back wheel. Which means it doesn't stop like the engine brake and stuff, it doesn't do anything. Um, and 
if he breaks any harder, it feels like the back's already coming up. So, that's one issue. Um, nice thing is now, uh, through the twisty bits, basically where you've got a bit of load on the side of the tyre, when you brake, say, into the old hairpin, because you're coming through Craner, the engine brakes actually helps because you've got some grip. But when you're upright, you don't have that grip from the rear. So, that's the issue at the moment. That's issue number one, is we still can't stop when we're upright very well, but we can stop through those bits. So the engine brake is great through there, but terrible here, because it locks it up. And mode B engine brake is better here, but doesn't help as much here. Compromise. Uh, and then the second problem is we've got loads and loads of side grip, but no drive grip. So when he's tickling the throttle on the side of the tyre, because the bike is now softer and lower, it grips really, really well. Then when he really nails the throttle on the corner exits, it just spins and murders the tyre and runs wide. So the two things we need to fix are, need to stop better when it's upright, and we need to grip better so it drives forwards. You know, it, it sounds simple. Let's fix these two things. Uh, if you have the answers, please write them on a postcard and send them to me. Uh, but until then, we'll look at some data work out where the chassis is actually sitting at different points and then work out what we're going to do. Uh, right, on the grid with Claire, because we like a little bit of glamour on the channel. Hello. Uh, right, it's quite fresh air, isn't it? It's, it's a little bit cold, yes. Yeah. Yes. Are we smuggling peanuts? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, Ryder is on his uh, first of his outlaps. He has the option to do two. We've put enough petrol in the bike. Uh, what else have we changed? We haven't changed geometry because he likes the feel of the bike. The thing where it doesn't stop into corners, we're not going to fix. Basically, we've uh, talked to many people in the paddock with Hondas. And if the rider relies on a bit of engine brake and back brake, which we do, uh, basically when they're upright, they lose contact with the rear tyre and then they don't stop very well. So what we've opted to do is change some engine brake and then we're going to rely on getting the bike out of the corner to make more of the lap time. Mid corner and exit is where we're gonna gain from what we had earlier. So we have very similar geometry to what we had earlier, but the rear shock is stiffer like it was in quali, uh, so that when he picks the throttle up and drives, it'll dig the tire into the floor a little bit more, not collapse as much, track align better, finish the corner, then he gets onto the straight faster, so then he can pass people even though he can't break that late. That's the idea. Uh, yeah, it's a, shall we say, a compromise of the settings that we've worked over the weekend. So I'm confident it will work. Uh, but until you try it, you never know. And it's cold. So hopefully we won't fall off down crater curves. Right, nearly time to race. Right, how are we feeling? Good, very good. Happy? Yeah. Cracking, yeah. right. Podium it is then. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jogging down pit lane with Rob and his bad knees. Uh, Ryder's just gone through, in fact. Uh, down to part of Ferme. Uh, got red flag with two laps to go. Uh, there's three people on the floor out of the hairpin and bikes all over the place. So hopefully they're all right. Um, right, race review. Good, for, good start. Uh, actually made some moves on turn one. Uh, had a, yeah, it was in the fight, basically. And then, uh, it all got a bit exciting for a couple of laps. So yeah, we went forward a bit, and then we went backwards a bit, and then uh, he cut across the uh, chicane at some point, of course, cut and didn't lose enough time in that lap. So we had to do a long lap and lost oh, about three seconds. Had a fight back, got past a couple of people who were realistically 20th, I think, uh, or 19th, and then with the red flag, I think we were 16th here for, in the finish. 29-4 though, really early in the race, so much better not quite as good as we hoped at the start of the weekend but we do have some positive the bike's in one piece you're in one piece and we've uh, we've done some learning yeah. yeah it's been difficult all weekend just haven't really ever found a found a flow and we've been changing it so it's been riding a different bike every time um but yeah just numerous different things really yeah. hard to ride yeah where, where the stocker just sort of slides and does its thing and is cut sort of nice to you. Yeah. Superbike's difficult. Yeah, I think you, where the stocker, we've spent a lot of time obviously setting it up and getting it to a good point. It's sort of like good reference to have as a superbike for what the superbike's not doing. But um, yeah, the stocker's definitely a lot easier to ride because it's, it's in the window, shall we say. 
but there's no reason why, you know, realistically we should be going the second, the second half quicker than what we're doing on the stocker. Um, but yeah, you're not going to do that um, over the course of, you know, four or five sessions. So yeah, more time needed on the bike. <laughs> We've had fun, regardless yeah. of the embarrassing results and running my foot over on the stocker and crashing. <laughs> <laughs> At least we're laughing about it. <laughs> cool. Laughing, not crying. Well done, Tom. Thank you, everyone. Gracias. And that is a wrap from Donington Park. Uh, it's been busy, stressful, uh, testing, and actually at times really quite good fun. Uh, the results haven't been what we wanted, but we've learned a lot. That seems to be the theme for our year. Uh, and we'd just like to say a really, really big well done to Harley. Se uh, first in the first race today, second in the second race, double podium to finish his season is mega. We'll all be back at Brands Hatch. So thank you for watching and join us again next time for some more Superbike fun.